I'm Amri Maffedon, CEO and head Stemet at Stemets. And I'm Lauren Wiley, and this is Stemets Say What. In each episode, we meet a different expert to discuss what it's really like to break into the fields of STEM and STEAM, STEM standing for science, technology, engineering and maths, and STEAM for science, technology, engineering, arts and maths. I totally think that it's always, again, having different perspectives is, you know, how you build things, like how you, you know, have conversation and how you solve problems. As a mentor, as we said, it can take any shape or form, any shape and type of people. Again, as you said about the Black Book, I think a good mentor also should be ready for the mentee to become the mentor. This week's guest is former Bake Off contestant Manon Legrave. She'll be answering all of our questions on mentorships. So Manon, I'm really excited to be chatting to you today. I have a very, very, very important question. I need you to go back in time to the first moment that you discovered the magic of STEM. What was that like? Can you tell us the story? You know, I think like looking back at my life before, I didn't really realize how much I loved math and how logical my mind was. But really, so I studied economics and I took that math as a speciality. As you might know, economics has so much math in it and I always loved it. It's quite interesting how I just fell back into it. Then, you know, working as a software consultant, then a software project manager. I never really thought I would work in IT, but somehow basically it was always here and it just kind of worked. After my degree, I worked for Blue Wolf. I joined a graduate program doing sales and then I started to train as a consultant. I just fell back into it and I just realized how much I love it. And I think there's so many opportunities and I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but it just kind of fell into places. I love having you on. I've had you on my podcast before as well. I love talking to you, Manon, and knowing about your story. I think for anyone listening, you know, we mentioned Bake Off there at the beginning, but how would you describe what your... I don't know if it's a job, what your career, like what's your title? How do you introduce yourself now? Yeah, I guess it's quite weird. Like, so now I'm a full kind of full-time content creator and I'm also a mum. So I have a daughter. So I kind of do part-time content creator and part-time mum. I think the things that maybe people don't realise is how much business and also, you know, still STEM is still part of my job. You know, I have so many analysis to do, so many statistics to look at so many kind of different sort of strategies, what works, what doesn't work, like how to edit videos. Again, it kind of go a bit further, but like I have all of the latest, you know, whatever, video, photography, sound, like everything that you have to think about when you create content. Um, so yeah, so I just develop recipes, share videos, share them online, and I have a book coming out as well in the spring, so that's very exciting. But coming back to being the software project manager, I think... I learned so much first learning about people and also learning about how business can really translate into IT and how they sort of merge together. And yeah, I still use that every day. It's still really part of me. And I think that's a really important thing to kind of remember, like whatever you do, we say this a lot at Stemets, like whatever you end up doing, if you're doing it in the 21st century, you really can't run away from STEM. And so whether you like it or not, like you're living the Stemet life one way or another. But let's get started. This is Stemet Say What. Let's do our first what. Now, to add context to this, Manon, you are not just a great face, a great person even to have on the podcast. You're not just a great face. You're not just a great baker. You have actually been a mentor on a STEMETS program before. And so that's why we wanted to delve into this because everyone has something to offer. But before you were Manon, well, I mean, we knew you before you were famous. You know, you were a mentor for us. You signed up to that program. You helped us. You worked out. You were volunteering. I want to know, let's start with the basics. What is the point of mentorship? What can you gain from mentorship? And I guess it's not really a what, but why did you sign up to be a mentor all those years back for Stamets? First, in my previous job, I had or I always had mentors and I loved my mentors. To be honest, I had three. I would consider three. Two of them are still some of my closest friends and one of them I'm still in touch. But like the impact these people had in my life, in my career and then my life, are just phenomenal. Being able to be a mentor for someone is such an honor, really. When you ask me, do you want to be you know, a mentor? I'm like, of course, yes, 100%. And I think I've always loved STEMETS. And I guess it was kind of another way that I could help and support. 
as a young girl, I would have loved to actually have that program and have a mentor and maybe, maybe straight away, it would have made me more confident even going into STEM jobs. Maybe if I had known about it before, maybe I would have pursued that before and it would have, might have been easier for me. And yes, yeah, so joined the program. So Katie Rose was my mentee. I'm not in the mentoring program anymore, but we, you know, we always text. And I think, and that's the beauty of it, you know, I've made a friend, you know, like being a mentor to someone is, is a work, but also a personal connection. And it can only work if you have this, I do believe. She would tell me when there's important stuff happening, like work-wise. So she wants to be a pilot in the Air Force. So she's, fin- she's just graduated and she's doing all the tests and stuff to get into pilot school, which is, as we know, so hard, like incredibly hard to get in. There's so limited space. So yeah, so she's killing it. So she's got the number one test done and she's waiting for uh, for extra two and hopefully she'll get into the school. Because I've been a mentee before, I was lucky to sort of know what a mentee is waiting for a mentor. So for example, for me, like my mentors, like I would say about Peter, I would talk about Peter in particular. He was my safety net, basically. I always knew I could text him or call him. So at work, if I had a professional issue or something I wasn't sure what to do, I would always be able to contact him and he would help me and wish me to do the right thing. So he would take me to meetings and I would hear, sit, listen. And after a couple of meetings, he would tell me, well, Manon, next time you would be leading the meeting. So he gave me the right confidence. He, he trained me, but also gave me the confidence and he had trust in me and I had trust in him. And then, yeah, and after a few weeks, few months, he would tell me, well, Mano, you ready? This is your client. Did I feel like I was ready? No. But he knew from his experience that I was ready and I had learned enough for him to let me go and manage this client on my own. I have a really important question about when you might want to engage a mentor. Because personally, I did the student met program in my final year of uni because I was about to get a job and I needed someone to tell me how to have a job. And that was like lovely and super useful. Do you have advice about which point when, you know, maybe someone should be looking to find a mentor? It's quite interesting because I found my mentors through work, but would I have beneficiated from a mentor before I start to work? A hundred percent. Again, if I had to do it again, when you finish university, where do you go? I love university and that, and I think they're getting much better. I finished like 10 years ago. I'm old, but they're much better at it. But there's so much that you don't know about a corporation. I don't know how to be, how to be, what to expect, how you can learn the most. That's why the STEM ed is amazing because it starts from a very early age. And I also do believe being in contact with, in brackets, seniors. So like people that have more experience than you, it doesn't matter about age or anything, but people that have more experience than you, you can always learn from them. So even having this kind of connection to not your peers, but to people you can learn from is very, very important. To be honest, it could be, I don't know, a family friend or someone that, you know, has a career that you're very interested in. You want to know more about what they do and you want to hear the story. I think people are always happy to help. You know, if I can help, I will help. I definitely agree with that. And I think also from the way that you've described it, Manon, it's also that it's not like one to one, like you have one mentor at a time. It's about having loads and about like, you know, filling those gaps and allowing them to complement each other or almost be like, you know, like a brain trust almost of like a group of folks that you can then turn to. So I think that's definitely a really important point that maybe gets missed sometimes actually when we talk about mentorship. My really, really, really important follow-up question is how do I ask someone to become a mentor? Do we just like hang out a lot and I begin to assume, is there an email template? What do I do? Yes. Again, I believe in attachment and connection because let's not forget a mentorship is a relationship. You can try to create a relationship, but if it doesn't click, I don't think it's worth pursuing. So I think you can try to call to try to find a a mentor, but I do think it's finding where you are are and even again program like stem it's where they help you to facilitate that finding a mentor that is true to you and that is ready to be a mentor because not everyone can be a mentor it's like not everyone can be a manager and i do believe not everyone can be a mentor so you have to be ready to not want anything back apart from the 
happiness of giving to someone and helping someone with your experience with different perspectives that you have. But you shouldn't, as a mentor, I believe, you shouldn't want anything back from your mentee. Like they're not here to listen to your issues, but you're here to help them. Mm. I, I agree on the connection thing. And I think that's definitely something I know we'll revisit. I think also, you know, to pick up on that point of not everyone can be a mentor. I think it's like seasons, right? And I think it's not even just about, are you senior enough or do you have enough knowledge? I think it is about, you know, do you have the capacity, like you said, sometimes it is capacity. Like I get requests all the time, you know, can you mentor my seven-year-old? Can you mentor me and my business? Can you mentor? And I'm like, do you know what? I actually don't want to set this up for failure. As much as we have a connection, the capacity that I have means that actually being able to do that for everybody that asks just isn't going to make sense. And it isn't going to allow me to be a good mentor to all the people I've already promised that I'm going to be a mentor of and all the people I already manage and, you know, all the semesters that we already have. And so actually, I think it is also that balance of making sure that you're realistic entering into that mentorship relationship as a mentor and as a mentee on respecting time on understanding that you're a piece of that person's world and you know they also have to sleep sometimes they also have to eat sometimes and so then having that respect both ways of like okay cool if we do have that connection but we can't have the mentorship what are the other avenues that I have to actually then learn from you or get that advice from you? I mean, that's partly why, you know, we have things like the podcast, like you said, there's so much that we do at Stamets to almost help fill that gap, but also allow you to learn things from people where they don't have to necessarily always meet, you know, meet you on the third Tuesday of every month for half an hour. Totally. I remember I was managing slash mentoring the juniors, the people that came kind of after me in the graduate program, which I loved. And then again, trained them you know, mentor them. And then they got on to take my clients because when I became a junior project manager, I had already a team of eight people to manage. I literally, I just, again, didn't have the capacity or the headspace to manage and mentor other people because I already had my team. As you said, we speak people's time. And maybe even I know with Katie Rose, sometimes we might not speak for three months, but for the important things, I know when I can support her. And I think it's, again, setting up boundaries and what's in it for that person and yeah respecting everyone everyone's time and agenda that was all super good advice and yeah like guys uh listeners out there like michelle obama is everyone's unofficial mentor listen to our podcast read the book you know all these people are sharing advice and like that that in a way like counts but we need to move with the conversation what number two what makes a good mentor First, you have to have the capacity. And second is you just have to be ready not to receive anything else from your mentee. I love to help and I love helping. I don't know, shaping the next generation. So it's, I'm not being ageist, but and I do think the next generation is why it's going to you know, change the world and we should always support them. And I think being a good mentor is, is that that has the time for them and just listen, listening. I think it's trusting as well. They have to trust you and you have to gain their trust, boosting their confidence. They're here to guide you and to give you the confidence that you have the answer in you. You know, it's not someone who's like, oh, I would have done that or I would have done that. I think it's kind of someone that you can have a discussion with. You might have different way of managing things, which doesn't mean it's a wrong or, or right thing to do, but they will help you to find your way. Don't always feel like you have to go for a female. I mean, it's different, but you really benefit from diversity, multiculturalism. So I think be open to different shape of mentoring and different type of people. I think it's almost ironic, right? To like double down and be like, yeah, like listen, having someone that's a good listener. I mean, given that this is a podcast and you're listening, I mean, a good mentor will listen to not only what you say, but what you don't say, right? And they'll listen to the differences in what you say over time and they'll notice things and notice the small things to then either pull you up on or give you advice on or direct you to other places. I think the other thing that we talk about a lot about Stabets as well, and this goes from mentoring into a little bit more sponsorship, which is, you know, mentoring is the advice, but some sponsorship is opening up the opportunities to do that advice. And I think also, you know, some of my best mentors have become sponsors. They're the ones who then have, you know, opened up their black book, which we talk about quite a lot, actually, on uh, the Shoot Smet program, right? It's not just you as the mentor, but who can you connect your person to, right? To then make those connections and open things up and create opportunities for them. And I think that's the other thing to look for in a mentor is the best relationships are ones where they connect you to those opportunities to try that advice. 
or they make suggestions for where you go and, and they point out things that you wouldn't see and get you into rooms that you couldn't get your, yourself into. There's a question coming for you in all of this, Manon, but I think it's also, you know, what about mentors that are external to the company that like you mentioned earlier? You know, you had like a manager, you have a boss that's a mentor, but you've also had external mentors. How is, does that fit together? How do you balance that? How do you decide picking one versus picking the other? Or is it important to have someone external to your company or external to your situation as a mentor too? I totally think that it's always, again, having different perspectives is, you know, how you build things, like how you, you know, have conversation and how you solve problems. As a mentor, as we said, it can take any shape or form, any shape and type of people. Again, as you said about the Black Book, I think a good mentor also should be ready for the mentee to become the mentor. I remember mentoring my kind of juniors that it was nothing better than giving them my client because, you know, you're already, you're progressing to doing something else. And they are also progressing. And, and that's really, you know, amazing. And that's a true mentor will always help you to rise up. That's really cool. So, you know, you just said that you had all these mentors who like had the jobs that you wanted. They were more senior than you. Do mentors always have to be, you know, a boss or someone like even in a completely different industry or doing a completely different thing, but like 10 steps ahead? Or could you have peer mentors I know like reverse mentoring is a thing that some companies do where senior leaders speak to super junior people and there are learnings to be gained. What's your take on that? You know, you can learn from anybody, whether they're junior or whether they're senior. Now is the world, you know, what happened in a hundred years before now happens in 10 years. So culturally and socially, there's so many things that change. So in a career, you have maybe a 50 years or like 40 years career. Imagine the things that you've missed this last 30 years that maybe someone new in the company can teach you. But then reversing that, I think experience means that you can do your job, whatever happens. As I think as a junior, you can do the job, but you haven't experienced all of the things that can go wrong. And I think the more you do, the more you become confident, the more you're ready for adversity. So to answer your question, I think sometimes like peer mentoring is maybe it's a bit more tricky because I guess if you're both trying to, you know, progress in your career, but you can, of course, still learn from each other. I do believe that teamwork and helping each other is always helps everyone anyway. I loved that my mentor were impressive, yes, but also inspiring. One of them, Julie, she was a senior project manager and I think she was the best project manager in my company. Yeah, I was super impressed. And also she was a female, she had a family. I was like, wow. So I think you have to have this sort of respect and it doesn't mean that I wanted her job, but because for me, she was always going to be inspiring. Or even my managing director, view as that, you know, I'm Mary. Like she's always been some sort of a mental thought. I never wanted her job because I never wanted to be a, a managing director in any ways, but she was so inspiring. I do believe that someone that you have a lot of respect for and someone that is inspiring to you, you will probably gain a bit more from that mentoring than someone who is a peer. But also as being a mentor, you can learn a lot from your mentee. I think you've talked a, a bit about this and like you and Anne-Marie both talked about like capacity. Does your potential mentor have the capacity to mentor you? But are there other things that you should like mention and highlight if you've like reached out to a mentor, you're trying to formalize the connection. What do you include and highlight and talk about in that like, I guess, mentorship negotiation? I think as what we said before in terms of capacity, so how often... Would you like to meet? Are you happy to, you know, be called or receive a text or an email at any point in time? Again, kind of talking about this safety net relationship, which I have to say to me, it worked really well for me. And I was always happy to be a safety net for someone as well. But it's not always possible. So we, really, you know, finalize this, you know, these different boundaries in terms of time. And then I think as a mentee is, you know, what do you want to learn? Like, what do you want to focus on? What's your goal? And how can your mentor help you to reach that goal? You know, do you need help with a CV? How to do an interview? The right people to speak to? How to use LinkedIn? Or as Anne-Marie said, like, do you need someone to help you with opening the black book and 
makes you meet different type of people to hopefully, you know, help you do interviews or get to a certain company or get to any graduate program. Be realistic because again, you know, it takes steps and I think your mentor will be able to be realistic about your expectation, which I think is, is quite good as a mentor also. And support, you know, like giving you confidence. Be open to receiving these advice as well. I think it's quite a big thing. You have to be ready for feedback. And again, it creates that trust that I think you have to have with, you know, in that relationship. Sounds good. And I think the negotiation, managing expectations always is the best way to start off any relationship, I think, you know, at, at any given point as well, right? Whether it's mentees, whether it's, I don't know, friendships, whether it's anything it could be, like any relationship, always make sure you set your expectations at the beginning so you don't end up getting um, hurt as we head in. So what three, there's a question that we've got from a listener that I want to I wanna kind of jump to. So the, the what three is, what is a paid mentorship? What is the difference between a paid mentorship or a free mentorship? Arichana K, a listener, hey Arichana, has sent in this question and she wants to know, should we be paying for a mentorship? There are several paid mentorship programs out there. Do they offer better connections or are they of better quality? Therefore, should we be looking for free or paid mentorships? I thought that was quite interesting. First, I didn't know that you can have paid mentorship. My first gut feeling is no. But then again, if you look back, is should everyone be paid for their time and for their work? Yes. So becoming from a mentor, if you have the capacity to be a mentor to someone, again, should not the sheer satisfaction of helping someone be enough? And what are the motivation of these people who get paid to mentor you? Don't get me wrong, there's people who are the specialist, so you pay to hear their, you know, their learnings and what they have to give you. Because a mentorship is, again, as we said, a relationship. So do you have to pay for a relationship? Hmm. normally no I mean Manon you've been really polite about it my thing I always for me it's always alarm bells when it's like paid mentorship I think if it's a lesson if you're teaching if you're coaching you know I, I normally talk about the holy trinity right you have a coach you have a mentor you have sponsor and your coach is probably the only person you pay because it's for a very specific skill and so then you're not mentoring me on that skill you're coaching me to a very specific end that has an end goal that has like a very defined you know monetary value all that and like investment in myself whereas mentoring is actually more advice and like you said it's about paying it forward it's about you know the lessons that someone might learn as a mentor and everything we've spoken about so far and then sponsorship we've touched on so I think my thing to our channel would be actually no it shouldn't if it's mentoring and it's paid then those two things it's almost like it's an oxymoron maybe possibly I mean let me know let us know (laughs) on Twitter and on social media send us an email if you're like I'm I'm paid to mentor and here's what I want yeah, I think we're heading into scary territory when you're paying somebody to mentor yeah. you or you're paying for those connections. I feel like that's something very different uh, rather than mentorship. I was being very polite. Just, you know, <laughs> you again, are, yeah. Me to <laughs> I see how like you might like be on Google and bump into a paid mentorship and be like, hmm, ha, mm. But like a lot of free mentorship programs exist. Students to Medsec, an exceptional program, that is free. That's an option. There are other options as well. And like, as a young person, you don't have too much money yet. I'm going to add the yet. If you want to like pay for a boot camp and at the end of that boot camp, you know, you can become like a developer for ASOS, pay for the boot camp. Mentorships don't really have the, that same like strong promise. And there are like all kinds of lovely people who will gladly talk to you for free. So we, we found a good mentor, preferably they're free. And we've agreed on the terms of this mentorship. What does a positive mentor-mentee relationship look like? How can someone as a young person make the most of a mentoring relationship? And maybe that's the same as asking, how can I be a good mentee? I guess respecting these boundaries that you've established at, you know, at the beginning. Don't hesitate to ask, you know, ask a question. Put your whole self into the program as well. Because I think as a mentor you know, you spend your time to help someone. And I think you want your mentee to be invested, respecting that you're spending your time to, you know, help them or in bracket, like look after them or, yeah, I think to be a good mentee is, yeah, respecting, respecting your mentor's time and fully be invested. 
because they are invested. Well, you know, they will be uh, respecting expectations. Have fun, you know, be you. Like, this is not a working relationship. You're not trying to impress them, basically. That's quite different to maybe impressing your, your manager. You know, you, you need to be you and true to yourself so then they can help you the most. Be polite, be respectful, show up prepared, simple but good. There's also that thing of like being clear, right? What What is it that you're looking for from the mentorship? And I find this a distinction that we have to make of like, there's one thing to be really clear on what you're looking for, which I feel like actually you should be more open on what you're looking for because often you don't have enough information to know whether someone you know, just because they're not from the same area or not in the same, you know, industry, whether they'll be of use to you. But I think being really clear on what your goals are and what you're hoping for in the mentorship. And it doesn't have to be, I want to be this person or I want to be in this role. It could be just, I want to not make a decision, right? Or I want to have more information for my decision that I'm about to make. So I think being really clear on what your what you'd like help from on the mentor, even if that evolves and that changes throughout the relationship, I think as an opening gambit, it's really good actually to come with some sort of shopping list, some sort of wish list, some sort of idea of like, here's what I look like in a mentored world versus here's what I look like without being mentored. I think those are people that get the most because then you start with one question and then you're able to open yourself up with more questions and you you start, like it's like a, um, what, like a blue sky brainstorming divergent process rather than something that then it like come very closed and you're like actually I need a mentor to get me this role at this company right now here and then that's maybe the difference between being paid and being free right is like yeah if you're really narrow on what you're trying to get done then yeah of course like you can say to someone pay me so we know that we've got the value that we paid for at the end whereas actually this is a discussion this is an opening and you don't know what, how life will change for yourself. You don't know how life will change for your mentor. And so actually it's a series of questions, open-ended questions, rather than you coming with an incredibly narrow um, goal. I think the, the other question to ask for kind of making the most, again, if we go tactical and we were talking about expectations as well, is how long should a mentorship relationship last? How often should you be checking in with someone? You know, what's the regularity? What's the time, I guess, you're thinking, Manon, as well, that we should have on these things? Yeah. Again, because it's a relationship, it's kind of, it can also come to an end. Like, if you don't feel like you get anything and if the mentor is not very involved, then maybe that's just the end of the relationship. And that's totally fine. Like, I don't speak to Peter, my mentor, who's back in America and stuff, which is fine. And I'm sure that if we reconnect, we will still be friends. And I still think he's an impressive person. It's not one mentor. You can have multiple mentors in different shape or form. And if it's working, if it's regular, it doesn't have to be on the dot. But if instinctively you want to reach out to that person because you trust them and you want their advice, then you know it's working. Yeah, you don't want it to, you don't want it to be too transactional and kind of up and down. You do want to like find a rhythm, but I think you also find the rhythm and yeah, like you should definitely allow, allow that rhythm. If you're in a formal program, obviously keep to whatever they've if they've promised or they've suggested but then once you leave or if it's more informal then yeah like allow that rhythm to change right but also i just want to say that i love the stem ed program because for me it was good to actually have a timeline as well you know as a mentor you kind of get into things in life and i think i really did love the fact that you st if you want to really become a mentor starting with a program so then you can learn about how to be the best mentor you can be so that would also be my advice for any person that wants to be a mentor Yeah, as well. That, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, because I think this is the peer mentoring thing also as well, because you then also learn from others. So whether you're learning from the organization that's giving you, we have meet guides as well that we gave the mentors, the mentees were able to see. Um, but I think it is also then you can compare notes with other people. I think if you are on a program like that and you can be like, oh, actually, you gave that to your mentee. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I could definitely do that for my mentee. And they value it, you know, and, and you're able to like work those things through together. So I think that's definitely another benefit actually of being on a formal program, whatever it might be, whether it's a Stemets one or not. You're then in a mentoring cohort. We're so individualistic now. There's not enough community. Yeah, it's just so important to have community. Like even And also intergenerational communities as well are so yeah. important. That's why I'm so for the mentoring program. I have a really interesting listener question. So this question is from... Anaid V, hi, how are you? And and I love I love this question. It says, is there any sort of advantage to having a mentor from the same cultural background? Do they understand you better and therefore mentor you in a way that's more suitable? 
as we know, multiculturalism and diversity is just the most amazing for any companies, any business, any life, really. But I guess she might have a point there because, yeah, you know, it might it might help, especially if as a senior woman in a company who has had to deal with, as we know, all of the still horrible, whether it's racism, whether it's sexism, whether it's, you know, all of that thing, she can definitely heal. She can probably help you better because maybe they understand you culturally more and maybe have a better perspective on your values as well and on how you can, you know, fit kind of together. Basically, from their learnings, what they can give to you might be a little bit more tailored. It's really like interesting and like complicated bubble of a thing. Like I am a young black woman, but my like best favorite mentor is a woman I met when I was babysitting, actually. I was babysitting. She was like a friend to the mom. She lives in the U.S. She's um, a white woman from Minnesota. And we have three hour long conversations. And she has written me countless recommendation letters and read countless draft CVs and been just like the biggest cheerleader in my life. At the same time, I have great community with young Black women who are like my peer mentors and we need each other to stay like confident and stave off imposter syndrome and have conversations where we don't have to explicitly say every everything and explain everything. But we need we need to get to what number four. We're having way too much fun. What number four? What are the benefits of mentoring? Oh gosh, I think we touched a lot on them. Personally, the number one would be having confidence in myself. I feel like that's what really my mentors gave me. Guidance uh, in you know what you want to be, what you want to do, the ways to get it. Then is meetings and like relationships again, can they uh, make you meet that person so you can do an interview at that job? And also, yeah, on the personal level, having, as I said before, having a safety net and learn, you can learn like so much learnings to be done. Yeah, you meant you get a mentor to learn, you become a mentor and you actually end up learning quite a lot. I think that's a big one where and think people sometimes think like learning is about courses, right? Or learning is about training or learning is about reading, whereas actually you can learn in so many different ways and having a mentor is definitely a big benefit. There's quite a lot of benefits actually that we can kind of tie them all up in a bow, right? Where it's, you know, sometimes at the end of the mentoring relationship, folks are like, yeah, it's just someone that's not my mom and not my teacher that I can talk to who kind of like cares about what's going on for me, which I think sometimes we can kind of forget like the importance of that where if you don't have you know, friends in the industry, if you don't have aunts and uncles, if you haven't been able to do that or make that connection, if you live in the middle of nowhere and no one from your village or town has ever really done much, then actually mentoring can be a nice little way to supercharge you being able to fulfill more of your potential than you'd be able to do with just what's around you. But I think to maybe double down on it, I mean, you know, from across your experiences, Manon, as a mentor and as a mentee, what are the kinds of, I don't know, they're like, core skills are there STEM skills in particular as well that you've picked up from mentoring that we could maybe just inspire the listeners with the kinds of things that they might gain on their mentoring journey? I, as a consultant, so I was a software consultant, so I had clients. And I remember looking at my mentor leading that meeting for an hour, an hour and a half, 10 people in the room. And I was like, wow, I could never do that. And then a year after, it's me leading the meeting with 10 senior people. I'm here, I'm, you know, 26 years old telling you, Mr. B, you know, what we're going to do in the next six months, then this is how you spend your money and this is, you're going to have to trust me. I have only learned that thanks to my mentor. And he, I think he was definitely uh, the reason why I had the confidence to lead it because I've seen him, I, I had learned from him. And I guess after this, all of the technical, all of the business side of things, all of the you know, coding and stuff, I learned from a lot of my peers. Managing them, actually, I learned, yeah, about coding, about um, Salesforce, all of these things was just through them. I didn't do any course, anything. It's really cool to hear that there's concrete, hard skills that, like, might emerge from being a mentor or being mentored. For STEM careers especially, or specifically, is mentoring really super important? Yeah, well, we need women to be at senior positions 
So then we can actually really tackle the gender pay gap. I do think it's obviously such another big issue. But especially as a mom now, you know, I mean, childcare crisis. I have, you know, a lot of friends who, you know, they took a year off and in coming back, they can't get the flexibility that they need. They, you know, the career might have, you know, they can't get the promotions they want to. Childcare is so expensive. Why do you work when you have to spend, you know, 80% of your salary in childcare? But by having more women into senior positions, that's only when we can change that. I mean, I'm very lucky my husband had six months paternity leave because I work for myself, his company, his Wells Fargo, they offer a shared parental leave. So he had six months full paid. And as a man and all, you know, every senior level said, you know, well done, like we should do it more, you know, just go sky high, like you can do it. You know, there's so many opportunities in the STEM industry. It's, there's definitely lots of rise that you can definitely go to the top in STEM for sure. And I agree. I think I think having the right kind of mentoring culture definitely allows folks to be able to do that. And STEM STEM careers can be ones that, you know, like we're saying, like they're quite complicated. They can be ones where, you know, they've got nuances, right? Not that they're more complicated than other careers because they're not, but they've got particular nuances that actually if you don't know, you wouldn't know that that's not the done thing or you wouldn't know that that particular output is more important or you wouldn't know that that's the analytic platform that people like and here's why here's what it says about you you know if you're Mac versus PC or whatever it would be so I think it is actually particularly important for STEM careers as well to have that as it evolves and it's not just about what's in books and what's written but it's like the unsaid things as well that yeah like you need a mentor to be able to blow those things open like give you the insights actually that you can't get through other channels so thank you so much Manon I feel like you we've been mentoring actually via the the channel of this podcast, which, you know, I'd never even actually thought about it in that way. But, you know, there's so many like tips and tricks and there'll be lots of folks that are making notes. And especially for everyone that's had their questions answered, I know we've definitely been able to provide that advice and definitely have a connection through your headphones or through your speaker or through however the sound has got to you. So it's been such a pleasure to have you back again, Manon. Before we go, where can listeners find out more about you and the work that you are doing? So my book is coming in the spring next year. It's called Et Voilà. And it's a, it's a simple French baking love story. So it's all the bakes that me and my family made at home. It's super simple. It's for the non-bakers. So you don't have to be so good at baking. And it's all, you know, delicious following the seasons. And it's, you know, getting back to, to homemade food for the family and for the heart. Uh, and yes, and you can find me on Instagram at Manon Lagrève. And I'm also on TikTok. Again, the new thing, which is also Manon Lagrève, which is very fun. You've been listening to Stemets Say What, a podcast brought to you by Stemets. To find out more about Stemets, visit stemets.org. That's S-T-E-M-E-T-T-E-S dot org. Or you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and YouTube via the handle Stemets. And don't forget to subscribe to the show so you get the latest episode of Stemets Say What in your feed as soon as it's released. And while you're there, leave a review and let us know what you thought. But also you'll get to see the show notes with all the links to all the juicy extra bits of information and resources that people like Manon are mentioning during the podcasts. I've been Amory Maffedon. I'm Lauren Wally. And bye for now. This podcast is produced by Unedited.